Welcome to Make Workshop, where we check out tools, toys, and tech built for makers. Today, we're gonna to be playing with lasers. Today on the workbench, we've got the full spectrum lasers, Muse 3D Vision. Now before we jump into looking at this laser and what it has to offer, I think I need to cover something real quick. I freaking love lasers. Now this is brand agnostic. I'm, I don't mean this specific laser, although I do think it's pretty cool. I mean any laser, even the cheap uh, imported K40 series lasers. Lasers are awesome. They are fast. Uh, you can do projects on them quickly. They're precise. The, the results that come out of them are cool looking. They're versatile. Lasers are incredible. And I would recommend any space get a laser. Now, that out of the way, this video is not sponsored, but Full Spectrum Laser did send us this laser to check out. Let's play with it a bit and see what this laser has to offer. Keep in mind, I get excited real easy because lasers are freaking awesome. So what we have here on the bench today is a Full Spectrum Lasers Muse 3D laser cutter. Now this is kind of the top of the line of their desktop Muse series of CO2 lasers. <laughs> they have one a little bit higher that's a fiber laser and several down lower that are lacking some features of this one. Just for example, starting out the most basic version of the Muse runs $3,500. This incarnation with the 3D vision system and auto focusing for curved surfaces runs $6,500. The Muse laser cutter systems come with a 40 watt CO2 laser with a 45 watt optional upgrade. That allows you to do things like cut through quarter inch wood, leather, uh, engraved glass, you know, with a, with a chemical coating, you can even mark metals. You can't cut metals or engrave metals directly with the CO2 lasers. They've got a 20 by 12 inch cutting area and two and a half inches of Z height. Now that Z height may be different on the different models because they have different options in the focusing head, such as this one has auto focusing, which requires a motor and stuff like that. They use a linear rail system for the motion on the gantry this direction, which is kind of nice. I like the linear rails. It feels sturdier than just rods and belts like my cheap import uh, laser cutter. And they have this seven inch touchscreen display, which is quite nice being able to control it and jog things around with a touch screen. The Muse systems use a cool box, which is basically your external air pump and water pump all in one. It connects to the machine and it's kind of nice not to have the old style that you've probably seen where people have like an aquarium pump down in a bucket and then an air compressor sitting next to it or something like this. It's nice to have an all in one unit that plugs into the back of the laser cutter and everything is controlled at once through the laser cutter itself. The water pump and the air pump don't kick on until they are needed and what's also nice is the machine won't run unless it detects them and knows that it's not going to overheat whenever it runs. It also has some other safety features like the fact that if you open the glass the laser stops firing immediately. That's kind of nice. The software to control this is actually hosted on the laser itself, on the board inside the laser. You turn on the laser and it fires up a server internally that then you can access over your local network or if like me you don't have internet in your shop, you can connect directly with a cable to be able to connect to the software on your laser. That's kind of nice. That means you can really run that software on any computer if you happen to have uh, an opportunity to take your laser to a new location or if your computer dies or something like that. Anything with a web browser pretty much could open up the software for this laser. It's called Retina Engrave and it has a full suite of features. You can import your images, you can import your vectors, send them to the machine, uh, scan the bed for optimal placement, all those kinds of things. Now, most modern laser systems have a camera system of some kind that allow you to do this. And I gotta say, it is one of my favorite additions to the modern world of lasers that you could possibly imagine. Even better than autofocusing Z, which we'll get into in a few moments. So 
When you load in your file, you put your stock into your machine, you scan it, the head will move back and forth and take a bunch of pictures, and then it will stitch them all into one single image, and then you can place your file wherever you need it. This saves you on material, it saves you on time, it allows you to get things precisely placed exactly where you want them. It's also nice because it can double as a scanner. You can hand draw stuff, scan it in, and then engrave that later. So let's talk about this model and what makes it different. This model has the Intel RealSense 3D camera in it. Right now what they're doing with that is you can have it detect the height of your material so that it is auto-focused to the height. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you've used a laser a few times, you know that every time you put in material, you need to get that laser head focused in for the perfect resolution line on your material, right? Well, with this RealSense camera, it auto-focuses perfectly every single time. It's fantastic. It also has the ability, if your material has some fluctuation to the surface, you can have multiple points where it will check for focus during the job, or you can even turn on a mode where it does it all in real time. So people use lasers for two main things, cutting and engraving. Cutting is high power, cuts right through your material. Engraving is lower power and can burn the surface of your material to make designs visible. Uh, this machine offers some nice quick features for engraving specifically. You can change the resolution on the, you know, in the, in the software from very low resolution to very high resolution so that you can adjust you know, the, the job that you're gonna do, the time it takes for it to do the job. It's nice to have the software able also to uh, take and process your images for you. You can just load in an image and make all these adjustments on the fly in the software to make sure the image is going to engrave correctly. So like I said before, that Z height is only two and a half inches high. However, the bottom of the machine is removable, which allows you to place this up on something that is larger than the machine itself. So for example, if you wanted to laser engrave uh, your kitchen cabinets, you could take off the door, lay the door down, put the entire machine on top of it, and engrave on that. Now they also make an optional accessory for this that's a riser box which fits the machine aesthetically and physically, lifts it up and gives you an additional Z height space to work within. Uh, I would definitely recommend that riser box if you're going to be doing something like rotary engraving or objects that are physically taller but still within that you know, cutting area size of the machine. So let's talk a little bit about fumes. You're burning stuff, basically, right? So it's gonna smell. With my uh, cheap K40, it does smell because there's gaps everywhere on the machine and the extraction is not that great. With this, I've been pleasantly surprised. The machine is sealed up pretty well. It has a built-in exhaust fan, which is nice. And then mine came with an additional high power exhaust fan that's actually sucking even harder and extending the blow outwards. That's fantastic. There are some materials, of course, you don't want to cut or engrave because they can produce poisonous fumes. I believe PVC is off limits. You should really check and do a little bit of research on any material you're going to engrave before you engrave it. Let's talk about that autofocus. Man, that is wonderful. If you can afford it, I would definitely go for the version with an autofocus. Now, I would get a laser either way, even if you couldn't get one with an autofocus, but you just have to manually focus things, which is a pain in the behind. But that autofocus is fantastic. You pretty much just put the head wherever you want it to be, click the button in the software, it detects the height and focuses on its own. Every cut I've done so far has been focused properly, which I can't say for my old laser. If you want to learn more about this laser, the other hobby lasers, or even the professional lasers that Full Spectrum makes, go to fslaser.com. Thanks for joining us. Please let me know in the comments down below what other kinds of tools, toys, and tech you'd like to see. I am so excited. We have some incredible stuff on the horizon. Uh, new gadgets coming out, cool robotic tools that we've been able to get our hands on to play with. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss a video.